pharmaceutical stocks have collectively underperformed the S&P 500 over the past 5, 10, and 15 years. How about some morphine to ease the pain? And yet, the growth prospects for the pharma sector are still quite bright. And after such a long period of lagging performance, you got to wonder, is a rebound coming? Well, today's ETF battle is an audience-requested matchup between a trio of pharma ETFs from State Street Global, Invesco, and Van Eck. Who wins? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. It's good to see you again. Keep your battle requests coming. Hit us up with your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. And if we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF Battles mug or a t-shirt. Don't forget to punch the subscribe button along with the like button if you've been enjoying the program. Today's ETF contest is another audience requested matchup, this time from Micah Shelton. And it's between a trio of pharmaceutical ETFs from Invesco, State Street Global, and Van Eck. Pharmaceuticals can be any type of drugs that are used for medicinal purposes in the treatment of diseases. And for our viewers in Beverly Hills, you'll be pleased to know that even Botox is considered a prescription medicine. Because we chose your battle, Micah, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. So congratulations again to Micah Shelton. That's what happens when we pick your ETF matchups. So judging today's triple header is an illustrious duo. We've got David Durking with TheStreet.com and Tom Ferrisegas with Bloomberg. Judges, welcome back. It's great to see you. Great to see you again, Ron. Glad to be back. Thanks, Ron. Our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then the mystery. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we're going to declare an overall battle winner based upon the analysis provided by our judges. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's get started with David. Cost is our first category. How do you see it? Yeah, XBH and PPH have identical expense ratios of 35 basis points. I think we can probably cross PJP off the list right away. It's got a 0.58% expense ratio. Uh, PPH is a little more traded, uh, so it's a little more liquid. You don't really see that too much in the trading spread, so costs are pretty similar. I'm going to judge this one to split decision on XPH and PPH based on the identical expense ratios. Thank you, David. That's a strong start. Tom, you're up next. How do you see it? Yeah, we're going to start off on the same page uh, with Dave. I think PJP can be taken off right away and uh, similar. They have the same expense ratio, PPH and XPH. But uh, like David had mentioned, PPH trades a little bit more. The spreads tend to be a little bit tighter there. They both trade pretty well, but uh, I'll give the side edge to PPH uh, just because it does, does trade a little bit narrower over time. Okay, that takes us next to exposure strategy. Tom, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Yeah, when I was digging into this one, it's actually quite interesting, right? When you see pharmaceuticals, but there's actually quite a big difference in some of the names. Uh, so one thing that I notice is with XPH and PJP, you get more biotech. There's some biotech names uh, hidden in there. PPH, why I like this one, it's more pure pharma. It's, it's all pharma. There's very, very little biotech into it. So I like it more as a pure play. Um, the other thing is it's much more concentrated. Uh, it's only got 26 names. XPH is a little bit broader. That's why you get you know the biotech in there. XPH is also equal weighted. That's the State Street one. So you can expect a little bit more volatility there. You can expect a little bit more of a small cap tilt. Uh, PPH is market cap weighted. One thing just to notice with that, it can get a little top heavy. They do cap the weights, but just keep in mind anything market cap weighted will, uh, will uh, could get a little top heavy. And then PJP uses a whole, uh, it's almost like a multi-factor approach. But for exposure, I like at the end PPH. I think it's the purest pharmaceutical play. I like, and I like that it's concentrated and it doesn't have any biotech in it. So I like it for its purity. Thank you, Tom. David, you're up next. In terms of exposure strategy, do you agree with Tom's analysis? Yeah, I think you hit it pretty much right on the head. Uh, I guess the only thing that uh, that I would add to that is, uh, like Tom mentioned, that PJP uses a multi-factor approach to it. So it's looking at a combination of things like price momentum and 
uh, balance sheet health and value and things like that. And I think in this market, that's probably going to be pretty important if we keep uh, if the markets keep whipsawing around the way they are. I do like PPH2 for its pure exposure for the same reasons that Tom said. I'm actually going to call it a split decision between PPH and PJP because uh, I just like the way that the portfolio is constructed, how it uses a little more of a smart beta approach. And I think that could potentially give it an edge here in the in the future. That takes us next to performance. David, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Yeah, you, you've kind of got two different stories here, depending on look, whether you're looking in the short or the long term. Uh, if you look back at uh, performance of these three funds back to PPH's inception date in 2011, PJP is the big outperformer here. It's gained about 270 percent, and that's far outweighed what you've seen in the in the other two ETFs. If you look just in the short term over the past year, PPH has been the the big outperformer. It's been up eight percent, where the, as the other two are well into negative territory. So. Uh, if you like the short-term performance, PPH and its more pure exposure to pharmaceuticals has done better. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to lean a little more towards the long-term performance and go with PJP on this one. Got you down for PJP. Thank you very much, David. Tom, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of performance? Sure, I'll focus on the shorter term uh, only because sometimes we've seen time and time again, even though the long-term performance, you can't argue with it people aren't great at timing and I don't know how many people would have held it for the long term, but in the short term, PPH is performing really well. And what's so interesting about even these sector ETFs, you would think they're all going to be performing the same. There's a pretty wide discrepancy in the short term of performance. PPH is actually up on the year. The other one, uh, XPH is down 11%. PJP is down 8%. That's a pretty huge discrepancy for someone just looking at pharma ETFs. So I like PPH in the short term. Uh, for performance. The other thing why the other ones are doing so poorly is because of that biotech tilt. Biotech's been getting hit pretty hard, so it's dragging that down. And so uh, sometimes when you're looking for sector exposure, I don't want other sort of industries to impact that. And so I really like PBH's performance now in the short term. Uh, and the other thing is with the uh, State Street one, again, the equal cap weighting makes it a lot more volatile. So PPH not only is performing better, it's actually uh, has lower vol than the other two as well. So I really, that's a nice kicker too. So on a, on a risk adjusted basis, it also looks a lot better. So my performance pick would be PPH. Thank you very much, Tom. And isn't that curious that it's a more concentrated por portfolio, PPH, yet it's less volatile. That's a, just yeah. an interesting combination because usually you don't see that, right? Those two, usually you associate concentrated portfolios with more volatility. Exactly. I think the market cap weighting is helping to sort of uh, narrow that down a little bit. And you actually get uh, the equal weighted State Street, which has the highest number of holdings, actually is the most volatile product because of its equal weighting, because of the volatility in some of the smaller cap names. So for sure, um, why it's so important to dig into uh, all the products and the weighting mechanisms, it really can have a big impact on on the, on the structure of the fund and its performance. That takes us next to our mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick that single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So Tom, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, so the mystery one is portfolio turnover. So what I mean is how often the fund is being rebalanced and what's happening. PJP, because of its multi-factor approach, it's going to have a little bit more turnover in the portfolio. So it's really just trying to use momentum and quality and value to sort of find you know better names within the sector. I don't know how, even though the performance uh, looks really good over the long term, um, I think that people need to factor in uh, portfolio costs over time. And this is also the more expensive ETF. And I think when you factor in turnover, um, the concentration in PPH and its market cap weighting, I think is going to keep that number down as well. So I think on a portfolio turnover basis, that's my mystery category. I also still like PPH because of its market cap, it's got less holdings. I think there's going to be less drag within the portfolio. Um, and I think that's something that people, it's not a top line cost. You don't see it like an expense ratio, but it's important to keep in mind how often the portfolio is turning over. Uh, and I like that PPH sort of keeps that down and its short term performance. So uh, the mystery category, turnover will be PPH. Excellent points. Thank you, Tom. David, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, Tom sort of alluded to what I wanted to talk about here, and that's the rebalancing schedule on these three funds. Uh, I, I think you're seeing a lot nowadays with how volatile the markets are. 
how important it is for these funds to stay nimble so they can sort of respond to conditions as they're changing. And that's something that's more important in uh, more volatile sectors like blockchain or cannabis or something like that. But it also applies to uh, even pharmaceuticals, something that's a little more defensive in nature. Um, XP, XPH and PJP both rebalance on a quarterly basis. PPH actually looks uh, or revisits its index only on a semi-annual basis. Uh, that's probably not a major issue with something like this, but I do like a fund that can uh, respond to conditions a little more quickly. I don't think there's a big difference between a quarterly and a semi-annual uh, revisit of the portfolios, but I'm gonna give a split decision between XPH and PJP because they rebalance and they revisit their portfolio a little more frequently. Thank you, David. That takes us now to the part of the program where our judges get to pick or give us their overall battle winner. And I think I kind of know how this is going to go down for one of our judges. The other one, I have no idea. We'll just have to see. So, David, give us your overall battle winner for today's Pharma Lollapalooza. Well, I'm guessing I'm the one who you have no idea who what I'm going to choose here, but I'm actually going to probably agree with Tom, and I'm going to go with PPH here uh, for a lot of the reasons that he mentioned. Um, I do like also that it's a little more pure exposure into the pharmaceutical sector. It's got the advantage on cost. Uh, the short-term performance is a little better, so you can see it's uh, it's outperforming in the kind of environment we're seeing right now. Um yeah, I, th I think there's advantages to some of the some of the other portfolios. I think uh, PJP and XPH have a little more of an, an all cap exposure. So if small caps really come back, you may see some momentum in those. Uh, I do like the smart beta approach of PJP, where it looks at you know balance sheet quality and earnings and things like that. So uh, I think that's a positive for that fund as well. But uh, if you're just looking to get exposure to pharmaceuticals in kind of the most straightforward way possible, I think PPH is the choice. Tom, your last opportunity to give us your analysis for today's battle. I should just change it now to spice things up, right? But you know, clearly, I, I like PPH. Um, I like in the short term, it's holding up better even with the market conditions. Uh, so I think if the market does turn around, this, this could end up uh, holding up even better than the other funds. Cost a big advantage, trading a big advantage, purity, lower volatility, uh, lower turnover. I think there, it checks a lot of boxes uh, to get sector exposure. So definitely uh, PPH is my overall pick. Our judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is PPH. And uh, it was a clean sweep for Tom in pretty much all categories. Um, he did have a semi-split decision. Could that be a... Uh, a, a category, a semi-split. Either it is a split or it's not. We've got semi-splits, but overall, I mean, he just liked PPH for all the reasons he mentioned. David was a little bit um, more split in terms of his choices, but he, in the end, he did agree with Tom that PPH is the purer play on pharmaceutical. It also um, won on terms of lower cost. Um, and then in terms of just to keep your eye out on that smart beta approach, I mean, David seemed to like that, PJP. He also liked the fact that PJP and XPH rebalance their portfolios a little bit more frequently than PPH, which only does it annually. And and also keep in mind, too, that uh, PPH does, doesn't really have exposure to any of those biotech a type of companies which in, 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 as of late have been getting creamed. So that uh, does explain why it's uh, performed a little bit better re more recently. But uh, overall, um, our judges gave some solid takes and outstanding analysis. Um, so guys, great job for breaking down today's pharmaceutical Lollapalooza. Well done. Thanks so much, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Well, keep up the good work, judges, and uh, be sure to visit the description section below for research links to our judges. Also, while you're there, you'll see our viewer resources section. We've got online classes, we've got tools, and a weekly newsletter. So be sure to take advantage of those wonderful resources that are there to help you to improve your investment outcomes. So which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? 
Post your ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>